in Hayes's Hotel in Thurles in County Tipperary. The Gaelic Athletic Association was founded by Michael Cusack. The first president was Maurice Davin and the first patron was Archbishop Croke, after whom, of course, Croke Park is named. And the association was to grow to become one of the biggest sporting organisations in the world and to have a huge influence on the cultural and political life of the country. And we're joined in studio this afternoon by Marcus de Borca, who is the author of the GAA History, and also by Eddie Kerr, who is the Kilkenny hurling legend, who features in the book, of course, because uh, you couldn't have a history of the GAA, as I said at the beginning of the programme, without mention of you. You're both very welcome. Thank you. Thank you now, Marcus, um, first of all, we must say that this is a revised edition because you did some of the work, you had the, the GAA history in 1980. That's right. It's in, in fact, it's 19 years, uh, almost to the month, since it was first published, which means that the work for it is 20 or 25 years ago. I spent uh, six or seven years researching the book. Uh, nobody had done a full-scale history of the GAA before me. So it took me roughly from 1972 to 78 or 79 to, to complete it, and it was published in 1980. And this is a new edition, revised and corrected and updated. We've two to new take us through into the next millennium. Right into the end of 1999. We have mm -hmm. two, two new chapters covering, right. the, covering the 19 years. Yes, because of course uh, 1984 was the, the centenary year. That's right. And uh, that couldn't go without um, being marked as we go into the new millennium. That's true, yes, and the centenary is dealt with in one of the two uh, new chapters. Yeah, we have a, a photograph, actually, a very nice one, taken during the centenary year of Paddy Buggy and um, the, uh, the, the, the banner. And we oh, might be yes. able to have a look. There it is there. Yes. That's one of the ones. Did, did you uh, find it easy to access all of these photographs and were people... Uh, yes, ah, there's a plentiful supply of photographs, you know, from commercial sources now, mm -hmm. there's no shortage. It, it's the earlier photographs that are hard to get, I presume which so. are hidden in country homes. Mm -hmm. And Marcus, I'm just wondering, because you're a retired barrister, but you're editor of the Tipperary Historical Journal, so is it the history or the, the sport? that brought you to, to write this book? Well, it was the sport, I suppose, which brought me to the history. I, I, I've been I was brought up in what you might call a GAA home and brought to games and encouraged to go to games all my life. And then I became interested in modern Irish history and the games led to the history. Yeah. I think that was the order in which it mm -hmm. occurred. And because um, you're third generation, are you not, of uh, a GAA family? Yes, that's true. Uh, both my father and my grandfather before me have been involved in the GAA at different levels. Going right back to 1885, I, I, it's, it's on record that my grandfather was a co-founder of a football club, which still survives, by the way, in Tipperary. And uh, he was interested more in athletics than in football. The GAA was very involved in athletics in the early years. And my father afterwards succeeded to his job in the same club. And then when he left to Prairie to earn a living, he, uh, he settled in Meath, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was an inter-county footballer and hurler there and an official, actually chairman of the Meath board during World War I. Mm -hmm. Uh, and incident, one, one of his colleagues in the GA there was Sean Boylan's father. Oh, I see. <coughs> and Marcus, um, you talk about Bloody Sunday in, in the book as part of the history, and your, your own father was, was there. Was he a spectator? He was, he, was a spec he was mainly a spectator, I think. He possibly had some duties as a, an official. Uh, he would have been connected with the Mead board at the time, but I think he went there mainly as a spectator to, to meet his friends like, like everybody else. And uh, he had a narrow escape. Uh, when the shooting started, he made his way out through the lanes at the back of Clonliffe Road. And uh, he was suddenly confronted, as he thought, by a group of military or police. So he just burst through the back, the, the gate of a back garden in the house. And uh, up at the top in a conservatory or a little um, glass house, uh, a family, there was a family group playing cards, 45 or 110 or something like that. And they realized his predicament. And they just said to him, take off your coat. And they dealt him a, ca a deck of <laughs> cards and a card. on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> really. There's another lovely photograph that uh, I'd like us to have a look at, because it's Hill 6 16, and my goodness, it was uh, it was packed to capacity. Oh yes. There, have a look at that now. Yeah. No that's, more. That's one of the last views of Hill 16 now. Yeah? 
Mm. <coughs> There's some lovely photographs. And there is another one that um, would serve as a very nice introduction to the man sitting beside you because uh, you have, there's a lovely photograph in the book of you, Eddie. Let's have a look at it. Is it there? Yes. That's there, you. There he is on the right, second on the right in the striped jersey. Mm -hmm. The black, right. the black and amber. Actually, just while we were talking there, Eddie, we had um, a phone call from Mary, who's from, surprise, surprise, Kilkenny. <laughs> and she wants to say thank you to you, Eddie, for all the happy memories. And also congratulations on the Kilkenny Masters this year. The people of Kilkenny are very proud of you. Oh, that's very nice. Thanks, Mary, whoever now, you are. Uh, you, Eddie, um, are, well, still very busy because you're the, the a columnist with Ireland on Sunday and also kind of um, promotions Joint promotions, manager. yes. So yeah. I, I, I took early retirement from the bank two years ago. So mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do something different. So Ireland on Sunday provided the platform for me to do that. So I'm enjoying that now, a few right. days a week. Mm. It's great. It's nice to have different things to it do. It is, isn't yeah, it? different from what I was doing yeah. in banking anyway. Now, uh, we, we uh, want to show a little piece of film that we have, and it actually shows you in action on three occasions. The first is in 1959, and then uh, there's a piece from 1969 when you were captain okay. of the Kilkenny team and the, the team won, and then 1975, which was your last All-Ireland appearance for Kilkenny. We'll have a look at them, and then maybe you'd uh, tell us about them afterwards. Let's have okay. a look at them first. Things are looking gloomy. Billy Dwyer must have said as he shoots for a goal, his shot is blocked down, and after this out again, in again session, minor hurler Eddie Kerr sends over to reduce the leeway. Just inside the 50-yard line, Eddie Kerr to take it. Almost in front of the goal, Eddie, who has scored no less than one goal and 27 points for the Kilkenny in the championship this year. the score now. One goal for Cork, one point for Kilkenny after four minutes of play. And this is Pat Delaney with the ball. He takes his shot. And the goalkeeper's got it out. He's got it out. And here's it out the free. It doesn't matter what happens now. It's another penalty. Eddie Kerr said that went in, but there was another penalty. What a save that was. And here it is, it's pretty near the end line, it's scooped out, and now Eddie Kerr is just going to take the free. Standing over the ball. Here it comes, this time it's gone, it's a goal! Brilliant! <laughs> that brings back nice memories, Eddie. That's uh, nice to see that, Mary. Uh, the 59 was my first year to play uh, senior. I was, uh, it is the last time there was a, there was a, a draw in the All-Ireland Final, and I was playing minor that year. 59, and uh, then I was brought onto the panel to, for the replay of the senior against Waterford. So I was introduced as a sub after about 20 minutes. So and you it scored? was a, ma a massive experience, you know. You scored two, the only two points that Kilkenny scored uh, in the second half. So I believe, yes. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, but it must have been nice a great thrill. I mean, if it hadn't been for the, the fact that there was a replay, that wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't, wouldn't have happened, have yeah. So it was a great honour because I was playing with fellas that were my heroes, you know, and. Uh, it was, it, was, uh, it was wonderful now to, mm -hmm. to get that experience. The other one was 69 when I was lucky enough to be captain of Kilkenny. How does that happen? Is it a selection process? Uh, no, your club in Kilkenny, it's different in every county, but in Kilkenny um, you have to win the county championship. The county champions get the honour of nominating a captain and my club won for the once and only time in 1968, so they nominated me as captain. So luckily as well, Kilkenny won in the year of my captaincy, so that was great honour for me right. to, from the club's point of view as well as from the county. The club of the Roar. The Roar in the Steeg, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, down in the south of Kilkenny. Very nice. Yeah. And um, when you think back to how you ended up in hurling, was was the fact that you were in a kind of a hurling school? You went to St. Kieran's, didn't you? Was that? I did. That, well, that was later, I suppose. I started in, in Innesteeg, and uh, there was a great interest in hurling amongst the young. It hadn't a great tradition for hurling before we came along, but there was a teacher there, Martin Welsh, who got us all hurling. And then we played in the school's competition there with, with Innesteeg, uh, Roar Innesteeg. And then I went on to St. Kieran's. And there I came across a, a legendary coach, Father Tommy Marr, 
Uh, I'd like to send best wishes to Father Tommy Murray. He's in hospital at the moment. Um, and he revolutionized the game, really, in coach with his coaching methods. So I was lucky to have him in St. Kieran's College. And then he was also training the Kilkenny team. So during all my career, I was under the eyes of Father Tommy Marr. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really become very kind of cool to, to play hurling now. And Marcus, I, was it in the book I was reading something about? It was 1995, wasn't it, when uh, Clare won after 81 yes. years? And That's all right. of a sudden... Yeah. Yes, yes. Clare and Wexford have, are, are the two great uh, <coughs> revival teams of the last uh, 10 years. Wexford hadn't won for, I, I couldn't, half a century or something. And Clare, of course, hadn't won for over 80 years. Mm. And uh, they made a great Just comeback. And it's, mm. you see, they, they have really added two first-class counties to the number of... Um, Huge interest, because it's, you know, it's the, the, the cool sport, as they say now. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Like, I mean, in, in the time when I started, there were the huge crowds again at All-Irelands. Uh, you know, as you saw, I think, some of the photos in Marcus' book, fellas sitting on the roof. There's the one brilliant one. You, you, yeah. you continue talking, and yeah. I'll look for and, it. Uh, there was a sort of a lull later on, and it wasn't as cool maybe in in some counties. Though it was all it would always been Kilkenny and Tipperary and Cork and those counties. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, uh, the revival, uh, like Offaly, is another county that came. Uh, Offaly, uh, and of course Clare in in this decade, and um, and Wexford's win. Mm -hmm. I mean they they revive the whole thing. There's that photograph you were talking about, yeah, Eddie. Brilliant, yeah, yeah they're, they're actually sitting uh, on the roof on of the, the roof. stand because uh, the stand is packed. There was no safety codes or anything I can there. tell you, it wouldn't happen now, would <laughs> no, it? No, no. It wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> can't brilliant. even come on the pitch now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I, that's interesting. Now, I'd love to get your, um, your opinions of that because I, I thought that looked very... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that looked very subdued. Yeah, I thought so. I must say, I really felt... I know that there's a body of opinion in favour very much in favour of it but I feel uh, I suppose particularly ourselves Kilkenny were defeated this year it's very lonesome on the defeated team out there uh, where their supporters can't come out and 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 you know put their clap them and say hard luck and everything you know and they're standing there while this sort of celebration is going on in the middle of the field yeah. I think they'll have to improve but they're, they're obviously this year was only an experiment mm. and I believe they'll pretty it up a bit They'll for next year. Give it the oomph yeah. back because yes, it yeah. needs that. We've had another phone call there, uh, many phone calls coming in, but a friend of yours would like to be particularly remembered to you, Maura Lynn from Roscommon. Oh, right, yeah. yeah Maura, okay. thank well, you Well, listen, much, Maura. Um, it's, a, it's a great book, Marcus. Uh, the, the amount of detail in it is phenomenal. I can understand how it took you um, the, the, the seven or the eight years to research, and it's a, a wonderful uh, volume for anybody who's interested in the GAA a history. Marcus de Borca, thank you for coming in, and also thank you, Eddie, thanks, and thanks Mary. for the memory, as they say. Thank you. Sure.